I want to show you an advanced audio editing technique that does take a while to do, especially if you're working on a longer project with a lot of dialogue. But if you take the time to do it, it's really going to go a long way in giving you a much more professional sound in your videos. But before we get into all of that, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, hi, my name's Jay and I work in audio post-production. And on this channel, I teach the audio side of DaVinci Resolve. So if that's something you want to learn more about, then I invite you to stick around and watch this video. Maybe watch a couple others and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Now, what we're gonna be talking about today is something called sample level editing. And this is something that I don't just do when I'm editing the dialogue of my videos. I also do it when I'm editing vocals in music and also when I edit my podcast. And if you have a podcast or you make videos where you have remote collaborators or if you do live streaming or even if you just want to have better video calls with clients and coworkers, then you really need to be using today's sponsor, Riverside. Riverside is an online platform that allows you to record and edit high quality videos. And it's perfect for, like I said, people who work with remote collaborators. They also let you do video calls and live streams. It's really, really amazing. I've been using Riverside to record my podcast for a couple of years now. Before that, I had a very short-lived interview series on this YouTube channel that I used Riverside for. And the reason why I keep going back to them is because, one, they keep adding new features that make it easier for creators to make videos. Because like I said, you don't just record with Riverside, you can also edit with Riverside. You can edit based on tracks, you can edit based on text, you can use AI editing to cut out silences and filler words and enhance your audio. And when you're all said and done, you can use Riverside to create viral shorts for social media. They just have a lot of stuff that you can do with your videos without ever having to leave the platform. But as we all know, I edit in DaVinci Resolve. So why do I continue to use Riverside? Well, one, because I'm not working with internet recording. See, a lot of other platforms, when you do a call, there's a couple of things that happen. One, everybody gets smushed together in the same recording, which means I'm not getting separate tracks. Also, everything gets recorded directly into the cloud, which means I'm not getting the highest possible quality out of the people who I'm on a call with. With Riverside, everybody's audio and video is recorded locally on their computer and then uploaded to the cloud, which means one, I'm getting separate tracks for all the participants. Two, I am getting the highest possible quality audio and video out of each participant. The second reason why I continue to use Riverside is because everything is synced up. Let's say we started a recording of the podcast and one of the co-hosts who is chronically late ends up joining after the recording already started. There is a possibility or an option to download the synced audio. They add silence in the parts where the person wasn't there so that when I download everything and throw it into DaVinci Resolve to edit, it's already synced up. I don't have to do any extra work there. Just throw it in and start editing. It's great. So if you're like me and you have a podcast or you work with remote collaborators on your YouTube videos, or if you just want to have higher quality video calls, or if you want to do live streaming, or if you want to be able to record and edit all in the same place, then click the link in the description of this video. Check out Riverside today. If you use the code Jay Lippman at checkout, you'll get 15% off. Now, unfortunately, even with Riverside's high quality local recording. Sometimes I'm dealing with somebody who has a bad audio cable or maybe they forgot their water bottle and their mouth is dry and they got a lot of mouth clicks or maybe they didn't have a microphone to use so they're using the built-in microphone on their laptop or computer and I have to deal with that. Then I get a lot of crackles and pops and snaps. I said that in the wrong order. I get a lot of little noises that need to be cleaned up, basically is what I'm saying. And that's where sample level audio editing comes in. Now, what do I mean by sample level audio editing? Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. I've got a clip here. We're gonna listen to it real quick. I had forgotten my water bottle when I first sat down to record this example, and it turned out to be kind of perfect. So let's 
Uh, let's take a listen. So this is my normal video setup. This is where I'm always sitting when I record my YouTube tutorials. I've got my SM7B right here, my Pocket Cinema Camera 6K right here, and my computer right here. And yeah, the only difference is I don't have my water with me. My mouth is a little dry. And just a quick pro tip, if you are, if you're, making videos, if you're recording videos and you want to minimize the amount of mouth noises, you really, really should be drinking water while you're recording. Otherwise, otherwise, uh, you get a lot of pops and smacks and stuff like that. So let's see if we can clean some of this up using sample level editing in DaVinci Resolve. So there you go. That's what I'm talking about. All those ma mouth smacks and stuff like that. It's just, it's just too much. Now, yes, there are, uh, there are AI powered tools and other plugins that you can use to get rid of this stuff. Uh, Isotopes RX, uh, Repair Assistant is really good at that, actually. But sometimes those plugins don't work the way they're supposed to, and you need to go in and do it manually. Now, I'm not talking about the on-purpose smack there. We're not going to work with that because that's stupid. I did it on purpose, and we're not going to work with the one where I kind of swallowed before I started talking because that's during a big, long pause that I can just get rid of. What we want to look for is something that kind of happened accidentally and happened maybe right before, right after I started talking where sample level editing really shines. So again, what do I mean by sample level editing? Well, if we look at the edit page, if I use the arrow to move forward and backward, I am always going to be moving one frame at a time. This is frame level editing. No matter how far in to my timeline, I zoom in, and I can only zoom in so far, I will always be moving a full frame at a time. So this is all frame level editing, which for video is fine because you're only recording one frame at a time, but with audio, it's different. Audio doesn't get recorded at one frame at a time. It gets recorded one sample at a time, and it's so many samples per second. How many samples depends on your own audio settings. So if we go over to the Fairlight page, and I have expanded this track so we can see better, if we zoom in on our waveform, if you want to zoom in, the best way to do it is hold down Alt on your keyboard and use your middle scroll wheel on your mouse. And it's always going to zoom in centered on your playhead. But if we keep going in and we keep going in and we keep going in, eventually what you're going to find are little keyframes. And every single one of these keyframes is a sample. And if we click on one of these keyframes, you see we can edit these samples. All we have to do is click and drag. So let's look at an example. Let's, I'm going to show you exactly how I would do this from start to finish, going with identifying sounds to use sample level editing on, and then actually fixing something using sample level editing. Let's go back to the edit page and we're going to listen to this one more time and we're going to play through and we're going to stop every time we hear something that needs to be cleaned up and then we'll go and fix it. So this is my normal video setup. This is where I'm always sitting when I record my YouTube tutorials. I've got my SM7B right here, my Pocket Cinema Camera 6K right here and my computer right here and yeah, the only difference is I don't have my water with me. My mouth is a little dry. And just a quick pro tip, if you are, if you're make. Okay, so this one right here, this can just be cut out probably because we'll cut out, we'll make a little jump cut from here to here. So we don't need to worry about that right now. If you're making videos, if you're recording videos and you want to minimize the amount of mouth noises, you really, really should be drinking water while you're recording. Otherwise, otherwise, right there, that's, 
That right there is exactly what we want. So I'm going to set a marker right there, actually, not on the timeline. I'm going to select my audio, and I'm going to set a marker, double click on it. I'm going to make sure it's red. Red means something needs to be fixed, at least in my world. And then I'm going to say mouth click. So now I know exactly what this marker is. I know it needs to be fixed, and we can move on. Otherwise, uh, you get a lot of pops and smacks and stuff like that. So let's see if we can clean some of this up using sample level editing in DaVinci Resolve. All right, cool. So let's move over to the Fairlight page and we're going to put our playhead over our red marker and we're gonna start zooming in. We just wanna keep zooming in until we start seeing those keyframes. There we go, boom. Then all we wanna do is we wanna click, we wanna make sure that our select arrow is selected. And then we want to click on one of the keyframes that's closest to that center line, that zero dB line. And we're gonna click and we're just going to drag our mouse along that line to get rid of our mouth click. But you can see it's not perfect, but if we play it again, other we're the other one, we're the other one, we're the other one. You can still hear it. It's not perfect, but it is a lot better than it was. Now, let's say you've done a lot of this work on one of these clicks and it's just not working and you've actually kind of made it worse and it does happen from time to time and you just need to start over. You've gone way too far and now Control Z isn't even gonna save you anymore. All you have to do is right click on your audio clip and come down and go reset edited samples. Boom, all of the edited samples are now we zoom back and forth or scroll back and forth, you'll see all the edited samples are now back to their original and we have that crazy pop again. Otherwise, we're the otherwise. And then you can start all over and do it over and over and over again because you're obsessive and you can't let anything not be perfect. I'm kidding, don't do that. Don't be like me, please, please don't be like me. A mistake here or there, a pop here and there isn't going to kill your video, but for big things that are noticeable, this is a great way to get rid of them. So again, this is a technique that I use a lot, especially if I'm dealing with subpar audio from a podcast guest, which does happen quite a bit. You would be amazed at the amount of people who don't have a decent microphone to use on video calls and podcasts. And again, if you have a podcast, you should definitely be using Riverside. Click the link in the description. Use the code JLipman for 15% off. And then also, uh, just so you know, this is kind of one of my steps for cleaning up horrible dialogue. If you want to know my process for cleaning up horrible dialogue manually, because sometimes AI fails, then check out this video right here. And until next time, don't forget to go out and make stuff. Thanks for watching.